Hi, welcome to ATR 720 Advanced Athletic Training Administration. My name is Jim Ave. I am the teacher for our class and I uh, look forward to getting to know you better through our time in class. Um, what I'm going to do in this, in this presentation is provide an overview of our course, um, but let me first start by reading a passage from uh, the book of Psalms. Um, this is from Psalms 1, verses 2 and 3. King David wrote, But those who delight in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. I like this uh, passage because um, it tells us what God expects, expects of his uh, people. He expects us to delight in the Bible. That's what the law of the Lord is, is the Bible. And we are expected to meditate on it day and night. doesn't mean that's the only thing we do, but it's always in the front of our head. We're thinking about it. Uh, how can I please God? What does, his, what does the Bible say? Um, and if we do that, uh, God promises that we'll be prosperous. doesn't mean we'll be rich. doesn't mean that we'll be famous. doesn't mean anything like that. It just means that uh, we'll be pleasing to Him and the things that we do, if we do it the way that He wants us to do, will be uh, done in a successful way. Again, what is successful in, in our American culture does, is not necessarily the same as what is what success is in God's economy. Because um, we want to please Him above all things. Let's talk about our class and first I'll start out with my contact information. You'll see, hopefully you've downloaded the syllabus. You'll see my contact information there. I have my email and phone numbers there. The uh, best way to contact me is typically through email. I'm pretty much in front of my computer all the time. Um, we can also set up time to talk on a phone if you uh, need help and you need uh, just to talk through some things. Best to probably set up a time for us to talk because I'm busy, you're busy. I want to be able to dedicate my time to help you. I also text. Um, if, you leave, if you call and leave me a voicemail or if you text me, just let me know who you are that you're in my class, your name, uh, because I don't have your contact information in my phone. And I typically do not answer phone calls when I don't know the number because I get a lot of bogus phone calls, which I'm sure you do too. But I'm here to help. Uh, you'll see on a syllabus my office hours uh, when I'm actually on campus in my office. Uh, I work from home quite a bit too, but I'm here to help answer your questions and all those fun things. I try to set up my classes surrounded by uh, answering big questions, uh, which are also linked to our course uh, learning objectives. And I have three big questions for our class. What are our big takeaways uh, that we should hopefully that will impact you, that you will uh, hopefully still remember years down the road. So our first question is, what are effective ways to process and manage change as an athletic trainer? Uh, we are constantly in uh, changing the way that we provide athletic training care to our patients. This class will specifically deal with the administration side of change, but I want to make sure that we focus on uh, what are effective ways to make changes when change is right in front of us. There's positive ways to do it and there are some negative ways to do this. Another question is how can we apply different athletic training and administration techniques to our professional setting? Since this is a administration class we're going to spend quite a bit of our time in our course talking about administrative techniques um, and how you can actually utilize those things. And our final question, 
what are your areas of strengths and leadership style and how are these displayed at your place of employment um, so if you've had me in a class before you know I try to focus on areas that we do well which we'll call strengths in this class we're going to dive into that a lot more and then we have in some of our other classes and we will also look at your areas of leadership and spend time discussing how you can use your areas of strengths and leadership at your place of employment or your future place of employment because most people do not stay at their one place of employment for their entire career that's not typical for American uh, employees now so that's what our classes are set up the class is set up to answer these three main questions and um, hopefully we'll actually answer these questions <laughs> excuse me I've been battling a cold for a while so what I have here on our this screen and the next um, screen is the textbooks for our class these three textbooks are required hopefully you've already purchased them who moved my cheese uh, by Spencer Johnson um, then we have the fish a remarkable way to boost morale and improve results by Stephen London and Barry Paul and Julius Christensen I think that's I can barely read the writing on the cover there and then our strengths based leadership great leaders teams and why people follow by Tom Rath and Barry Conchi uh, so these are your three required books for our class we'll dig into these books I'll talk about each one of these well the first the cheese and the fish a little bit more um, in a future presentation and the strengths based leadership uh, I'll talk more in uh, another presentation when I talk about that specific assignment. Now, I also said in our in the email I talked about textbooks. If you have a current uh, athletic training administrative book, you don't have to. You didn't have to buy a new one. Even if you've had it for a few years, uh, you didn't need to purchase one. But if you wanted to have a reference, these were the two books that I recommended. Again, you weren't required to buy these books. Um, the Administrative Topics and Athletic Training is a newer book that I just uh, got uh, about six months ago. And then the management, <coughs> excuse me, management strategies and athletic training I've had for years. Use this book in this class for years. Again, I'm not going to specifically refer to any of these books in our class. Uh, it's just a resource for you to have on your bookshelf. I'm a, I love books, so I, if you ever come to my office, You'll see I got books all over the place. Um, I think they're just good resources to have. So I'm just going to discuss the main assignments in this class. There are other assignments than the ones that I'm going to show uh, in this presentation. And for some of these assignments, I will have additional presentations that go in more detail. So our uh, assignments that we're going to have every week are uh, devotionals it's uh, I believe it's the crazy love devotionals by Francis Chan um, you'll watch one or two videos per week you'll uh, provide a <coughs> quick summary and how the material applies to you personally and professionally and then you'll provide one or two open-ended questions as a reminder, open-ended questions are questions that uh, cannot be answered with a yes-no response. If you've been in the program for a while, you've done these before for newer students, because we do have some new students in our class, um, I think you'll catch on to these pretty quickly. Um, and just a little side note, just remember when we're doing devotions or any really of any of our forum discussions, uh, that it's okay to disagree with other people. Um, but there's a way to do that. You can do that with um, respect. Um, just because you disrespect a per or sorry, just because you disagree with a person doesn't mean that you're a hater and uh, you're closed-minded. That just means you have a different opinion. That's fine. Um, so this 
just realize that um, that we're all on the, uh, trying to learn together. We're trying to build a learning community and trying to have a place that we can express ourselves and um, feel free to have our opinions. And it's okay not to disagree. It's okay to disagree with somebody. Okay. You can do that with respect and love. We, we're going to have two uh, assignments, the cheese and fish critiques, and I'm going to go more in detail on these in um, later weeks. But basically what you'll do is read these books and provide a summary of the book, find additional articles, and discuss how you can apply the principles from these books <coughs> as an athletic trainer. We're going to spend a lot of time in our athletic training and leadership strengths. You'll see we'll have several uh, rough drafts. Um, actually, you have this week you have to take the Clifton Strengths Finder and some leadership quizzes. And all you're going to turn in this week is the results. You're not going to provide anything else this week other than the results. Uh, so you'll have several rough drafts for this particular assignment. <coughs> Again, sorry for my coughing. Um, because I want to help you through this process of thinking through your leadership uh, strengths. And our signature assignment for this class is called the Athletic Training and Administration Topic Presentation. Uh, I have another presentation in this week because this week you need to pick your topic. Um, for our newer students, the signature assignments are a pretty big assignment. Uh, they're research-based. Uh, designed to um, assess a specific or specific uh, student learning outcomes for our program and for this class. Uh, this is what separates a graduate student from an undergraduate student. Undergraduate students, you um, learn a whole bunch of stuff about a topic, whereas you're not an expert in anything, really. Uh, you're a generalist, but when you become a master's student, you become a master in a particular area. So in this particular assignment, you'll become the expert in one specific athletic training administration topic. Again, I'll go more in detail on this when I go over the presentation on that particular assignment. Again, there's more assignments than these. These are just uh, kind of major ones. Uh, there's some uh, other assignments that I have in class. Um, not busy work, but it's, they're designed to check understanding for some things and to help you learn some other things. How to be successful in this class and pretty much all classes in our graduate program. The first and most important things, you need to have the desire to, to want to learn. Uh, you all decided to get your master's degree. You didn't have to get your master's degree, but each one of you decided that you wanted to do a post-professional master's in athletic training. So I assume that you want to learn and you want to learn the material. Um, you're willing to spend the time to um, learn and to be successful in this course <coughs> and want to be able to take the material that you learn in this learn from this class and use it as an athletic trainer, not only while you're in this class, but years down the road. Another way to be successful is ask questions. If you're not really too sure what is being asked of you, ask. That's what I'm here for. I typically tell students to use our question and answer form. Uh, post your questions there because if you have questions, I assume other questions, other students will have questions about the same material. I try to provide details. I try to provide uh, you know, detailed in my syllabus and the uh, assignment directions and all those type of things. Uh, but if you're still not sure, ask. I'm here to help. We're all really busy. Um, some are busier than others. Um, sometimes each semester has its own um, life. Um, you all get busy at different times, but the critical thing uh, for our students to be successful is time management. 
do a little bit every single day. Set up time in your calendar that you are only doing coursework. It doesn't have to necessarily just be this class. It could be the other class that you are registered in. <coughs> but set up that time that just like if you had to go to campus for two or three, four hours a, a day on a Thursday night, you're in class. Nothing can really interrupt that. And you need to do that every day in this online program because this is an accelerated class. It's eight weeks. Um, normally this would be a 16-week course and we're compressing it down to eight weeks. So you are expected to spend about 10 to 15, 20 hours a week on your courses, on this course. Now what does that mean? What are you going to be doing? You're going to be reading books, you're going to be reading journal articles, you're going to do library searches, you're going to be writing papers, you're going to be uh, posting in the forums, you're going to be watching videos, and those type of things. So each week is, some weeks will be more work, some weeks will be less work. You'll see in the syllabus that I have put in there, start wor working on your literature review for your athletic training administration presentation. I'm trying to tell you to get ahead of the things because that signature assignment's due, I think, in week five or at end of week five or end of week six. Um, I think it's end of week five. So you have now until then to get that presentation done. Don't wait until week three, four to do it or the week of because you will not get it done. Uh, with all the other things you got going on with work, family, kids, uh, other classes, uh, uh, social life, those type of things, you need to be um, scheduled and have time management skills. So some other course requirements that I have in here. <coughs> Submit your assignments on time. Um, you are a professional student. Um, I expect everything to be done on time. Now, if you get sick or something happens, what I do want you to do is inform me of that. We're adults. We're all adults in this class. Uh, treat me as an adult, and I'll treat you as an adult. If you got something going on, you're sick, don't wait till Sunday at 10 p.m. to tell me you've been sick for the last four days. Tell me immediately that you're not going to be able to get it done. I have little um, grace for people who wait to the last minute to tell me that, oh, I've been sick for four days and I can't get this done. I'd rather you just tell me up front, hey, I, this week's going to be brutal. Um, I, you know, I'm hosting a baseball tournament that basically I'm going to be working six, 16 hours a day for five days. I Believe me, I've been there, done that. So just let me know. I just keep me informed of what's going on. Now, if it becomes a weekly thing, that's a different story than me and you have need to sit on the phone and talk about your continuing in the program. I, as I said earlier, I provide <laughs> I provide a detailed assignment directions. Follow those directions. Again, if you're not sure, ask questions. Formatting matters to me. Um, in the Moodle orientation class, I have an APA um, template for you to use. Follow that. Use it. Learn APA. You are expected to learn APA um, for correctly citing papers, citing sources in paper, both in the paper and the reference page, um, and all those other things that APA requires. Use the template that I've provided you. Writing. Um, I have provided you a link <coughs> to use Grammarly. Grammarly is an online uh, writing tool. It'll check your papers to make sure that you are your writing is grammatically correct. Correct. You actually can add on uh, both in Firefox and in Chrome, I believe, probably in Safari, an add-on. So, like when you post in forms, it'll also check your writing and your grammar there. I use it in my forms because I am a horrible writer. Um, I know good writing, I know bad writing, but I really can't help all that much helping others with writing. So if you need writing help, 
Find somebody else, use Grammarly. It's free to you as a graduate student at FBU. If you do use Grammarly, please remove the comments out of the paper before you turn them in to me. If you don't, you'll get a feedback from me about that. Uh, forum assignments. Uh, the forums, you are, those are formal assignments. I do expect you to answer questions, uh, either questions that I've posted or questions your fellow students have posted uh, thoroughly, uh, comprehensively, support what you write with references, or as I like to say, become a use um, evidence-based academics, which means that you need, just like in our practice, we need to use good quality evidence to base our clinical practices uh, on. We also need to do that with our what we write, that we support what we write with references. And there is a various levels of types of references uh, some of you have taken research methods and some of you haven't taken research methods. What are acceptable references are journal articles, peer-reviewed journal articles like the Journal of Athletic Training or Athletic Training Education Journal uh, or other physical therapy, occupational therapy, PE, uh, kinesiology related uh, academic journals. That's the gold standard uh, are those. You can also use our <clears throat> position statements from the NETA or other position statements from other professional organizations. Uh, those, again, are gold standard. What are, are not accepted are websites, Wikipedia, blogs, those type of things. But you still need to support what you write in forms and in papers with references and support what you write, um, unless it is asking about personal opinion then you don't have to support what you write because it's a personal opinion. Um, occasionally, I'll post class announcements which will go to your email or I'll send an email to all students. But do check your email because uh, you are uh, held. If I send out a class email and I make changes in the course, you are expected to follow what I've put in those emails. If I give you feedback, uh, uh, for example, in the athletic training leadership strengths, uh, rough drafts, when I give you feedback, I expect you to read the feedback and make the changes that I've put in there. I use <coughs> in Microsoft Word, there's a way to put comments in your paper you have to have your paper set on the printer print view in order to see the feedback, or I'll make changes in red fonts. But I expect you to make changes on the rough drafts when I give you feedback. Again, if you have any questions about the course, about assignments, uh, about the program, since I'm the program director, please ask. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you navigate through the program, through this class, through FBU. Um, so I look forward to learning with you about various athletic training administration topics, your strengths, your leadership skills, uh, and a bunch of various other fun topics. <clears throat>